There's an alphabet to art, and that's what I want to get into now and be able to really communicate in the language of art, not only from your creative information and ideas, but also understanding what the masters have done and their whole decision-making process. There is what's called an S-curve. Okay. Now, if I turn this painting upside down, so we've gone over a couple of elements. We've gone over the diagonals. We've gone over the, the square, the center of interest. And now if you take a look at the S-curve, that's also one of the major elements in design, which we'll be talking about. Do you happen to see an S-curve in this painting? Well, obviously, look at that. You know. And now, not only is, are these figures organized in this fashion, but also, um, they are, it's the S-curve that is the major arabesque that leads the eye around the painting. So when you come in this painting, you follow through and flow through the S-curve, and then come back out, and your eye continues to go around. It comes around here, and down these branches, out of the picture plane, into the picture again with the feet coming up here, coming along the shoulder up to the eye of the lady and back around here, coming back through here to the feet and around and outside the picture plane and your eye continues to travel around the painting by design. Next element of design. Beethoven's fifth goes pa 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 pom pa 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 pom pa 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 pom theme and variation of the same theme. And artists will use that same idea by taking an angle and repeating it over and over and over. Now, if you look at the Boogaroo here, he's done that. He takes vertical angles and repeats them. He has the trees coming through here. He has the horizon, horizontal angles coming through here. But he also has this kind of an angle that has tension. And he repeats this. Here, it's in the trees, it's in the limbs, it's in the leaves. So by repeating the diagonals, or repeating angles, you actually tie the painting together and provide a, uh, uh, a rhythm as well as a continuity, as opposed to something that's just you know, haphazardly done. What I'm sharing with you is an intellectual connection. So instead of being reactive to the artwork and trying to make it work, you can actually be proactive and, and have more control over your paintings as you design them. Take a look at a Raphael drawing. There's an angle here, like with the arm. You can feel it. Uh, that's the same angle as the face of this main character. It's the same angle as the back of his head. It's the same angle as the hand to the, to the face of the, uh, that person in back, down to the eyes here. It's the same angle of his legs. And where we're going into now is the finishing part of the painting. How to take a painting that may be put together well design-wise, color-wise, but it just needs that oomph, that pack, that impact, that, that snap to make it a very successful painting, to get people's attention, and to have that aliveness. We're going to go on to other lessons uh, specific about portraits and, and design of the, the, uh, the face and so on in, in future programs.